Hello everyone, welcome to basic electronics tutorials. In this video, I am going to discuss on the topic diode equivalent circuits. In my previous video, I have discussed about the working principle of a semiconductor diode. If you have not yet watched that video, I highly recommend you to watch that video first before you continue with this video. You can watch it by clicking on the link shown in the top right corner right now or I will leave the link of the same in the video description below. Coming back to the topic of this video which is diode equivalent circuits, let us first understand what is an equivalent circuit. An equivalent circuit is a combination of elements properly chosen to best represent the actual terminal characteristics of a device or a system in a particular operating region. What is the use of studying any device's equivalent circuit? Studying the equivalent circuits will enable us to replace the device symbol from any schematic without severely affecting the actual behavior of the system. So, the advantage of such a representation is that the network with equivalent circuit can now be solved using the traditional circuit analysis techniques. To elaborate on the need for studying the equivalent circuits, let us consider the simple circuit shown in the figure 1 here. As you can see here, we have a voltage source, a DC voltage source in particular. We have a diode and lastly we have a load resistor represented by R. Assume that the voltage applied is 10 volts and the load resistance is equal to 10 ohms. In such a scenario, if I ask you what is the voltage across the diode which is VD as well as the current across the diode which is ID when the diode is in on state then you need to know the internal characteristics of the diode. If you apply the Kirchhoff's voltage law to this circuit, you can write the equation as E is equals to the value of the circuit current I multiplied by the load resistor R. For such an equation, you note that the diode has not played any role. Therefore, to understand the significance of the diode, we need to now study the equivalent circuits. Once we study the equivalent circuit, we will come to know that the diode is not an ideal part and the fact that it has an internal resistance as well as it has a voltage drop when it is in the on condition. Therefore, it becomes very essential that you study the equivalent circuit for the devices. Let us now look at the different equivalent circuits for a semiconductor diode. We can represent a semiconductor diode in its equivalent circuit form in three methods. The first one is the piecewise linear equivalent circuit. The second one is the simplified equivalent circuit. And the last one is the ideal equivalent circuit. Let us now discuss these three methods in more detail. I am going to start this with the discussion on piecewise linear equivalent circuit. One of the best techniques for obtaining an equivalent circuit for any device is to approximate the characteristics of the device by using straight line segments. The equivalent circuit so obtained is called a piecewise linear equivalent circuit. To understand the piecewise linear equivalent circuit for a diode, let us consider the characteristics of a diode as shown in the figure 2 here. By carefully analyzing the characteristics, which is the forward bias characteristics of a diode, we note that it is not possible to exactly represent the actual characteristics of the semiconductor diode just by drawing straight lines. If you concentrate on the knee voltage region of the characteristic curve, you will understand why. However, the remaining segments of the characteristic curve can be approximated by using a straight line. And this approximation is sufficiently close to the actual characteristic curve. Please note the knee voltage region of the characteristic curve is represented by a horizontal straight line which almost overlaps the x axis. 
and the straight line curve after the knee voltage is represented by a vertical line which has a certain slope. Therefore, we can now say that this particular technique provides an excellent first approximation to the actual behavior of the device. Please note that I said this technique provides only an approximation and does not exactly duplicate the characteristics. So, we need to now find out the differences between the approximation and the original characteristics to create the equivalent circuit. Note that the actual characteristic curve after the knee region is a line with a finite slope. So, we need to now understand what does the slope of this line indicate. The slope of this line indicates that the device offers a finite resistance to the flow of current when it is in the on condition. This resistance is depicted by a resistor in the piecewise linear equivalent circuit as shown in figure 3 here. I am currently talking about this resistance. Please note the diode shown here is an ideal diode. It is included in the circuit here to indicate you that the diode conducts only in one direction. Please remember we are currently studying the forward characteristics of the diode. If we assume a reverse bias condition, then this diode will be represented by a open circuit state. While studying the working principle of a semiconductor diode, we learned that a diode requires a finite positive voltage across the anode to cathode terminals to turn on. We have represented this voltage as the knee voltage. This is represented by Vk. This knee voltage is now represented by a battery in the equivalent circuit. I am talking about this battery and this represents the knee voltage required to turn on the device. Please note the battery must be placed in a direction opposite to the direction of conduction of the diode. That is, the negative terminal of the battery must be connected towards the anode terminal of the device. So, what does this battery represent in an equivalent circuit? The battery is put here to specify that the voltage across the device must be greater than the threshold battery voltage for the ideal diode to conduct. For a practical diode, the value of the threshold voltage depends upon the material that is used for constructing the device. For a silicon based diode, the threshold voltage or knee voltage is 0.7 volts. Once the diode starts conducting, the resistance offered by the diode is specified by the resistor and this resistor is represented by RAV. One of the most important things in understanding the characteristics of a diode is to find the value of RAV. There are several methods to find RAV. And one of the most simplest forms of finding RAV is to refer the specification sheet provided with the diode. If you do not have the specification sheet, then you can use the approximation shown in the second point here to find the value of RAV. Let us assume that the forward current of the diode is given by IF equal to 10 milliamps. And this is the value of the current when the applied voltage is Vd is equals to 0.8 volts. Let us now assume that the diode is made up of silicon. So, it has a knee voltage of 0.7 volts. And since knee voltage is the minimum voltage across the diode to turn on, at the exact value of 0.7 volts, the current across the device is 0 amperes. Please note, the diode will start to conduct only for values of knee voltage greater than 0.7 volts. Therefore, at exact 0.7 volt, the current is 0. The value of RAV can now be approximated using the equation 1 shown here. RAV is equal to change in the voltage across the device divided by change in the current across the device in certain point to point application. In this part of the equation, we have shown the change in the voltage and in the denominator, we have shown the change in the current. 
As previously said, the applied voltage is 0.8 volts and the new voltage is 0.7 volts. The forward current across the diode when the applied voltage is 0.8 volts is 10 milliamperes. When the voltage across the diode is equal to new voltage is 0 amperes. Simplifying this, we will find that the value of RAV is 10 ohms. So, what does this 10 ohms indicate? This 10 ohm indicates the resistance offered by the diode for the flow of the forward current across the same when it is in on condition. In the third approximation to find RAV, this is a scenario when you do not have either the characteristic curves or the specification sheets for a diode. In such a scenario, the resistance RAV can be taken as equal to the AC resistance of the circuit which is represented by Rd. So, in summary, a piecewise linear equivalent circuit for a diode has a voltage source which represents the new voltage of the device and has a resistor which represents the resistance offered by the device for the flow of current through the same. Please remember the diode symbol shown here is an ideal diode symbol. Let us now move on to the second equivalent circuit and this is called as simplified equivalent circuit. For most of the electronic applications, the value of resistance RAV is so small that it is usually ignored by comparing it to the other elements of the network. Since the resistance RAV indicates the slope of the characteristic curve, eliminating RAV from the equivalent circuit would mean that the characteristics of a diode is now an absolute straight line with zero slope. This is indicated in figure 4 here. Please note, this is the simplified equivalent circuit for a diode. If you look at the representation of the simplified equivalent circuit, you will note that the only thing missing while comparing it to the piecewise linear equivalent circuit is the resistance RAV. Coming back to the characteristic curve on the left which is here, please note the characteristic curve is now an absolute straight line with zero slope because there is no resistance offered by the diode. So, in summary, the simplified equivalent circuit indicates that a forward bias silicon diode under DC conditions only has a voltage drop of 0.4 volts across it when it is in the conducting state. Let us now move on to the last equivalent circuit technique and this is called as the ideal equivalent circuit. Generally, when forward biasing a diode, the applied voltage is considerably larger than the turn on voltage or the new voltage of the device. Therefore, by comparing the magnitudes of the applied voltage and the new voltage, we can say that the new voltage value can be ignored. Please note, this is only when the applied voltage is considerably larger than the value of the new voltage. Figure 5 here indicates an ideal equivalent circuit. Look at the equivalent circuit here, we neither have the voltage source which represents the new voltage nor we have the resistor which represents the slope of the characteristic curve. Therefore, when you come back to the characteristic curves for the ideal diode, you will note that the characteristic curve shoots sharply at the voltage Vd equal to 0. Why is it? Because in an ideal scenario, a diode does not require any voltage to turn on. Therefore, the current across the device even when the value of the applied voltage is 0 is considerably high. Please note this is only an ideal scenario. Any practical diode will have a finite and considerable new voltage value and is always used in the mathematical approximations. Before I end this video, let me now summarize the three equivalent circuits of a diode. The first technique we studied was the piecewise linear model in which a diode has both a voltage source as well as a resistor connected in series with an ideal diode. In the second model which was the simplified equivalent circuit, the value of the resistance RAV was neglected 
considering the magnitudes of the other resistors in the circuit and therefore the equivalent circuit in the simplified model only has a voltage source and an ideal diode. Lastly, coming to the ideal equivalent circuit, we note that the equivalent circuit only has an ideal diode and both the voltage source as well as the resistor are eliminated. Coming to the characteristic curves for the piecewise linear model, you note that the characteristic curve is represented by a straight line with a finite slope, whereas the same in the simplified equivalent circuit is represented by a vertical line with zero slope. Please note in both these characteristic curves, the diode is shown to have a new voltage of Vk. Coming to the last characteristic curve, which is for the ideal equivalent circuit, we note that the characteristic curve is a vertical line with zero slope and this line is represented at an applied voltage of 0 volts, which indicates that the diode does not require any voltage to turn on and it triggers ideally at 0 volts. Right, that is about this discussion on diode equivalent circuits. In my next video, I will be discussing on the diode load line analysis. So, stay tuned. Well, that is the end of this video. If you like this video, kindly like and share this video and subscribe to my channel for more tutorials on basic electronics. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.